You're listening to Crud Talk, a ministry of 50 shades of grace. Everybody's got a story. I'm guessing like me, you've been hurt before. But what if I told you there was more to this life than being stuck in the hurt and sin of your past? Hey, we all have crud, but it's how we deal with it that makes all the difference. Today's episode is brought to you by a generous sponsor just like you. We thank you for your gift, which allows us to share hope and continue to help people deal with the crud in their lives. So thank you. If you're interested in becoming a sponsor, message me and I'll give you all the details. Thank you so much. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Crud Talk. I am Sonia Bruner. How are you doing? Well, tonight we are going to be talking about discontentment. (laughs) So let me just preface this by saying, I know that discontentment is a hoity-toity word (laughs) that we really don't talk about or say in modern language very much anymore. But the reality is there are so many of us walking around with this doom and gloom, huge, gigantic chip on our shoulder. And I just got to thinking, what what is happening? So let's just jump in tonight. Now is the winter of our discontent. The famous words of William Shakespeare describing the political and social unrest of the times. And by using the word winter, he describes it as this gloomy, bleak, and discouraging cloud of oppression, this agitation that was present. Sounds about right in the world we're living in, doesn't it? We are a society that has more than ever as far as money, modern conveniences, information, and the ability to learn and change our circumstances. Now, all we have to do is Google it and we can find anything we need, like right now. Almost everyone has a phone. I don't know anyone actually who doesn't have a phone. Think about all the things we can do with our phones. That blows my mind. I have food, I have water, I have a home to live in, air conditioning, a car to drive. I have a husband and kids and a family and friends, a ministry that I love, people in my life that really matter to me. I have a purpose. I have Funyuns. What else do I need? (laughs) And why do we feel like we need more? We are not happy with what we have, so we kill ourselves, spend money we can't afford, and fill up our bodies, our minds with junk that is not healthy for us. We're always chasing satisfaction and contentment but still we are discontent. We have everything, but there is more emptiness and loneliness today than ever before. The numbers on depression, anxiety, and suicide are at an all-time, all-time scary level. And we are not able to meet the demand and provide effective resources because of the number of people who are struggling right now. That's really near and dear to my heart too, by the way. Maybe we should all sing, I can't get no satisfaction, right? But I try, right? And I try, and I try, and I try. I can't get no. Okay, yeah, I'll stop. There are so many Christians walking around discontent. So what is that about? We have God's word, we have the church, and for those of us with a personal relationship with Christ, we have Jesus himself. So what's going on? Discontentment. That means unhappiness caused by the failure of one's hopes, desires, or expectations. Disappointment, discontent, disgruntlement, dissatisfaction, letdown, regret. Discontentment says that I deserve better than what God has given me. A better job, a better life, a better spouse, better kids, elevated status. We've turned into the McDonald's society. You deserve a break today or have it your way. So what does that look like in different areas of our lives? What about marriage? The world tells us if you aren't feeling it, get out of it. You don't have to stay. It's okay to be happy. Do what feels right to you. Feelings change. You don't have to stay. You deserve more. I would ask this first. Have you opened your mouth and communicated how you feel, what you need? Are you doing the things that you know your spouse needs from you? Do you have a safe base? You know, when the kids play tag and there's a safe base so you can catch your breath for a minute before you have to jump in and run again? Our marriages have to be the safe base. 
a place where we can be safe to share our deepest desires and hurts in a way that will not be held against us. It's easy to flee hard things. I like to use the poopy in the pool analogy. (laughs) What happens if the kiddie pool is full and all of a sudden you see a brown chunk floating by? (laughs) It's every man for himself. It's mass exodus. I know. I grew up in an apartment complex with a pool. We used to purposely leave baby Ruth bars in the water. (laughs) A blob of poop can clear out a pool of people in about 10 seconds flat. It's easy to walk away rather than stay and work out the emotions, the hurts, or the habits that have created the problem, or even have to work on ourselves. Because you know it's never us. It's always the other person causing all the conflict. (laughs) Yep. We woo our spouse. We put in the effort to get them. And then as the years go by, the new wears off and it isn't as fun or engaging as it used to be. Fat, (laughs) cellulite, jobs, bills, kids, and feeling like, am I missing out? All adds up to this discontentment that adults sometimes feel in marriage. But here's the thing. Someone has to stay. Someone has to be willing to get in there and clean out the poop. If each of us is unwilling to touch it and get dirty, then what's going to happen the next time something hard happens? Will we stay and do the work or take off when we get dissatisfied? You can't control the other person, but we can control how we respond. What about a job that leaves you dissatisfied? You've heard this phrase, the grass is always greener on the other side. I know people that job hop over and over searching for the perfect position and they are good for a while but then they become restless and ready to move on i have to tell you i struggle with this i get bored and i i totally struggle with this the economy though is not what it used to be can i get an amen so we need to make sure that we are not abandoning ship before we are certain that the lord is telling us to move on and here's the truth Grass, no matter what side of the fence it's on, is still grass. Did you hear me? Grass, no matter what side of the fence it's on, is still grass. You have to work hard at it in order for the grass to be good and green. Just saying. What does discontentment mean within our relationships to the church or its people? Ooh. (laughs) When I'm unfulfilled or bored, I will find something or someone that makes me feel happy. When I get my little feelings hurt, I can just leave and it's okay to not ever talk to those people again. Wrong. Romans 12, verse 18. If possible, so far as it depends on you, be at peace with all men. Okay, ooh, ooh, ooh. Let's read that again because I have to hear that too. If possible, so far as it depends on you, that's me and you, be at peace with some of the men? Nope, that's not what it says. It says all men. So what will happen the next time your feelings get hurt and the next time and the next and the next and the next? You hear what I'm saying? In Philippians 4, verse 11 through 13, I don't say this out of need for I have learned to be content in whatever circumstances I am. I know both how to have a little and I know how to have a lot. In any and all circumstances, I have learned the secret of being content, whether well-fed or hungry, whether in abundance or in need. I am able to do all things through him who strengthens me. I thought that was so cool and I never caught that before. He learned how to be content, which meant there were probably times that he wasn't. Yay! I'm not the only loser. (laughs) Right? Oh my goodness. When we're discontent, we do these things. We're saying that we don't trust God. Contentment is trusting God completely. When we're discontent, it's actually the opposite of faith. Hmm. When we're discontent, we're rebelling against God's plan. We want to be the boss, and many times we convince ourselves that Jesus doesn't know us like we know us. I think my plan for me is better. Ugh, so dumb, right? That's so dumb. Discontentment makes us react in a way that's jealous, or we compare ourselves to others and covet something God did not give to us. Ooh, ouch. He gave us a son, therefore, can we not trust him for all things? Right? When we're discontent, it communicates that we believe God has made a mistake. My present circumstances have to be wrong. This isn't how it's supposed to be. I will only be content when they change to suit my desires and expectations. Ooh. Discontentment 
denies the wisdom of God and exalts my wisdom. Isn't this exactly what Eve did in the garden in questioning the goodness of God's word? Discontentment was at the heart of the first sin. Did God really say? That's you know that's what Satan said. That's the question at the heart of all of our discontentment. Surely there has to be more. If he really loved you, he would, right? Those little those little icky things he plants that tries to throw with those darts he throws. What do you do if you are feeling dissatisfied or discontent? Number one, are you tired? You're probably wondering, Sonia, why did you start with are you tired? Being a tired, <laughs> being tired affects every single detail of our lives. When we are tired, there's all different reasons why we're tired. We need to figure it out. Have you been getting enough sleep at night? I'm talking about good sleep now. How is your overall health? How is your eating habits? Are you exercising, drinking enough water? Are you taking care of yourself or are you neglecting your temple? Ooh. So I'm gonna have to, st- oh, I don't wanna do this. I have to stop here, full disclosure. Ugh. I don't wanna have to say this out loud, but the Lord's gonna make me do it. Oh, he's so fun. Mm-mm. I hate it, I hate it. Okay, I, full disclosure, I am neglecting my temple. I am tired, I'm exhausted, I'm weary, I'm lazy, unmotivated, moody, withdrawn, discontent in many of the areas of my life because I am not making healthy choices for myself. I'm just gonna say it out loud. I think it's the Lord wants me to and I'm sure nobody listening is struggling with this at all. I'm pretty sure I'm the only one. My body hurts, I'm fatigued and I'm stuffing my face and self-medicating with idolatry funyuns. (laughs) That's the truth, y'all. The only one who can do anything about it is me. I need to make healthy choices for me so that I can do what the Lord has called me to do. No excuses, no whiny, this is why I eat the Funyuns, boo-hoo, none of that. So starting this week, I will drink water and I will move every day. And I'm gonna try to do that every single day for the next 30 days. I'm gonna say this out loud, whoa. Yeah, you pray for me. Number two. Has anything traumatic happened in your life that would cause stress, maybe fear or worry? Are you dealing with your crud or are you refusing to deal with it? Remember that we deal with our crud as it happens and continue to deal with it until it doesn't cause us to respond in a way that's harmful to ourselves or to others. Number three, is what you are feeling hormonal? Both men and women struggle with hormones. Testosterone levels for men, medications that they're taking, all of that. Are you struggling with depression? Women, are you consulting a doctor? If your emotions are out of whack, I feel your pain, but I also know it's not okay to be mean to anyone, ever. All of us need to do what we can to live in health and peace in our homes. So check your hormone levels, everybody. Number four, How are you and Jesus doing? Are you reading his word every day, filling up your heart and mind with truth and his thoughts? I gotta say, I know when I'm discontent, I seem to distance myself from Jesus instead of pouring myself out to him. It seems like I'm hyper self-focused on what I don't have as opposed to what I do. Number five, are you involved in sin? Something nobody knows about. Sin separates us from a holy God. If you're struggling in sin, have you told anyone? Do you have a godly person that can hold you accountable? I want to say this here. You will never be content when you are doing something against God. You won't. You might think, I'm having fun. I'm living my life, doing what I want, saying what I want, being whatever I want to be, when I want, with who I want. Truth is whatever I want to believe Let me do me and you better not say anything against what I do or say, only my opinion counts. So don't judge me, but love me and accept me, agree with me and celebrate with me, but keep your crazy wrong beliefs to yourself. (sighs) You can argue with me all you want, but I am telling you, you won't be content while you make choices that go against God. There will be a longing, a deep hole of sorrow, like a drug addict, who gets his first high, but then chases that high and can never achieve it again. You will never be satisfied living without God. Everything else is fake. Number six, are you connected to a local body of believers? 
a Bible believing church that teaches the word of God as total truth. So Dr. Lambert, um, Tony Lambert used to tell a story when he would preach about these ugly black oak trees. (laughs) I don't think they're very cool, but the black oak trees in this area of the country are just gnarly. And we get a lot of like um, ice storms and stuff that happen. And so the branches at the top of the trees crack, but they never fall and hit the ground. Why? Because the other branches are so gnarly and so close together and stay together that it holds the cracked, broken branches up off the ground. I love that. That's what the local church is, y'all. Being connected to a local church is not an option. It's a mandatory. A lot of people say, well, you know, I can, I can love Jesus not going to church. You know what? The word of God is very specific. He wants you in church. It says it in the word of God. So don't, don't listen to me. It's not just because I say it. It's because Jesus says it. It's not an option. It's mandatory. Get yourself co- connected to a local Bible-believing church that teaches the word of God as total truth. You cannot make it without it. Certainly not in this day and age. Number seven, are you serving others? Sometimes the best way to see what Jesus has given us is to help those that don't have next to nothing taking the focus off of ourselves and putting it on to someone else who really needs the lift up can change my attitude real quick. Number eight, am I sharing my story of what Jesus has done in my life? Or am I too dissatisfied or discontent in my own life to give Jesus the credit and share the hope in him with others? Being content means that we accept the circumstances where God has placed us and trust him in the entire process super hard to do. I get that. But it doesn't change the truth of that statement. Number one, change is part of life. Circumstances change so my joy and satisfaction cannot be tied to life circumstances. Jesus can't be the genie in the bottle where we rub the lamp and he gives us what we want in order to be happy and content in life. But what happens when we don't get what we think he should give us? What happens then? Trusting Jesus in the process of all things means that we say, God, you are enough. You are good. You will take care of me. You will see me through this. Number two, the most important thing in my life is my relationship with Jesus Christ. He is my hope. Hope is one of our greatest possessions. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ, the solid rock, I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. Human beings can live 40 days without food. Did you know that? Four days without water and four minutes without air but we can't live four seconds without hope. In order for me to have hope, I have to trust the one who is my hope. He is who he says he is, or he's a liar. If he is for me, he can't be against me. If he loves me, he can't hate me. If he says I'm forgiven, then I'm not condemned. Think about that. Number three, Jesus loves me. Nothing happens to me that is separate from his will. This one, y'all, is really a hard one because when bad things happen, Jesus knows about those things and we're left wondering, why would you allow that to happen to me? What did I do to you? But here's the thing. God's will is perfect. And we know that if he allowed it, it will work for my good. It takes great faith to believe that and to trust him when things are hard. Anything after sin came into the world is open to the whole wrestle against the flesh thing, and we have free will and free choice. Have you made the right choice in all things in your life? (laughs) Probably not. I know I haven't. So we know that sin is here and will continue to be here until we get to heaven. This is where faith comes in, believing that no matter what happens to me in my life, God is with me and he will get me through it. We need to always be looking for Jesus in the circumstance. What is he doing? How is he leading? What is he teaching me? Instead of getting frustrated or anxious, ask, what do you want me to see in this Jesus? Number four, 
This world is not my home. I totally forget that sometimes. Do you? Think about how short our time on earth is compared to forever and ever and ever and ever with Jesus. That's eternity. Whatever we're going through here now is temporary. And we have eternity. No pain, shame, sadness, feeling less than to worship Jesus 100% knowing that we are loved. So how do we overcome discontentment? Here's the answer. (laughs) Philippians 4 verse 13. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. Oh, that's a good word, y'all. If you are struggling with discontentment, go back, go back through this list and just be honest with God. Be honest with yourself. Help God, ask God to help you see beyond just what you're what you're seeing and what you're feeling because our feelings are fickle, y'all. They're here today, gone tomorrow. But Jesus can do all things. I'm Sonia Bruner. Thank you for listening to Crud Talk today. You can go to my website at soniabruner.com. There's all kinds of information in there. Please feel free to share this podcast with someone else. God is good, y'all. I'm Sonia Bruner. This is Crud Talk. See you next time.